Hi class, this is Coach Riza. In this video, we are going to talk about the Big Bang Theory and formation of the light elements. Physical science pertains to the study of natural phenomena associated with non-living objects. It includes physics, astronomy, chemistry, earth science, and meteorology. The key terms or the key topics that we are going to talk about in this video are the following. Cosmology, Big Bang Theory or Big Bang Model, Nucleosynthesis, Singularity, Inflation, Annihilation, Recombination, Redshift, Relative Abundance, and Cosmic Microwave Background. The first one or the first term is cosmology. Cosmology is a branch of astronomy that involves the origin and evolution of the universe from the Big Bang to today and on into the future. There are three cosmic stages through which specific groups of elements were formed. First is the Big Bang nucleosynthesis. It formed the light elements, hydrogen, helium, and lithium. Second cosmic stage is the stellar formation and evolution. It formed the elements heavier than beryllium to iron. And the third cosmic stage is the stellar explosion or supernova. It formed the elements heavier than iron. This illustration shows us the universe and the formation of the elements. During the Big Bang, hydrogen and helium are the first elements formed and that happened 15 billion years ago as the universe developed stellar fusion occurs wherein the stars are formed and during that time beryllium to iron elements are formed 14 to 5 billion years ago stellar explosion or supernova happened and during supernova or stellar explosion, heavier than iron are formed, or the elements heavier than iron are formed. So this is how uh, the elements are formed during the development of our universe. The Big Bang Theory explains how the elements were initially formed. The formation of different elements involve many nuclear reactions, including fusion, fission and radioactive decay which we will discuss on the following topics the big bang theory part of its proof is the amounts of hydrogen and helium we have in the universe today this illustration shows us the evolution of the universe according to the big bang theory so from time zero from the time begins until 10 raised to negative 43 seconds all matter and energy in the universe existed as a hot dense tiny state which we called the singularity so the cosmos goes through a super fast inflation expanding from the size of an atom to that of a grapefruit in a tiny fraction of a second so it all started glass from a single hot dense point which we called the singularity it then underwent extremely rapid inflation so nag expand itong ating universe now from singularity it expanded now from the size of an atom to that of a grapefruit 10 raised to negative 32 seconds later conditions allowed the existence of quarks and other particles so during that time post inflation the universe is a seating hot soup of electrons quarks and other particles so quarks class is a type of an elementary particle which is the major constituent of matter ito yung bumubuo sa mga particles natin particles of matter at 10 raised to negative 6 second a rapidly cooling cosmos permits quarks to clump into protons and neutrons. So in a tiny fraction of a second, on that part, no, dun palang nag-start, magbuo, 
mag-clump together si quarks to form protons and neutrons nung lumamig ng kaunti ang ating universe. And those three uh, stages happened in the duration of one second. Now, from the time begins to one second, yun yung mga kaganapang naganap sa ating universe. Time skip, three minutes later, so still too hot to form into atoms, so charge electrons and protons prevent light from shining. So the universe is super hot fog. So during that time, there is no light. So it is also called the dark ages of the universe. Okay. And from that point, dito na nga mag start yung nucleosynthesis. So from here, time skip ulit. 300,000 years later, medyo lumamig na ngayon yung universe natin. So, electrons combined with protons and neutrons to form atoms. Mostly hydrogen and helium. So, light can finally shine. So, after 300,000 years later pa lang na, nabuo sila hydrogen and helium. Billions of years later, Gravity makes hydrogen and helium gas coalesce. It means to uh, clump together to form the giant clouds that will become galaxies. Smaller clumps of gas collapse to form the first star. So, billions of years later pa nag-start mabuo yung mga galaxies and yung mga stars natin sa ating universe. And then, 15 billion years later, up to the present, as galaxies cluster together under gravity, the first stars die and spew heavy elements. So, dito naganap yung part ng stellar explosion. No? Pag namatay yung stars, nakakaroon ng stellar explosion or supernova, wherein nafoform yung heavy elements, which is na brought out sa space. So, that's how the universe evolves now from the time begins up to the present day according to the Big Bang Theory. So let's move on to the stages of the Big Bang Theory. So a while ago, now we have seen how the universe evolved, now the development of our universe from the time, from the beginning up to the present. Now let's go deeper on the stages of the Big Bang Theory. First is the singularity. So like what I have said a while ago, singularity is a hot, dense, tiny state, which is also in the size of an atom. Now this singularity is a point in space and or a moment in time where the universe was infinitely hot and dense. So do nagsimula ang lahat. From a singularity and then that singularity expand it underwent an extremely rapid expansion which we call inflation so here is another illustration that shows us now how it all started and then from the singularity inflation happened so it rapidly expanded and developed into the universe that we know today so the next one is inflation so, as I have said, the inflation is a rapid expansion. So, it is a theory of exponential expansion of space in the early universe. The inflationary epoch lasted from 10 raised to negative 36 seconds. So, in a tiny fraction of a second, no inflation happened. So, here again is an illustration that shows us the Big Bang, the development or the evolution of our universe. Now let's move on to nucleosynthesis. Nucleosynthesis is the process that creates new atomic nuclei from pre-existing nucleons, so primarily protons and neutrons. If you can still remember class now, during our chemistry subject, the nucleus is composed of protons and neutrons. Yun yung bumubuo sa nucleus ng isang 
atom. So, during nucleosynthesis, no, sa prosesong ito, dito nagaganap yung pagkakabuo ng mga nucleus ng ating mga atoms. Okay? So, yung mga unang nabuong nucleus ay yung nucleus nila hydrogen and helium. So, from protons and neutrons, they combine together forming the nuclei, atomic nuclei or the nucleus. So, nucleosynthesis, as the universe cools, protons and neutrons fuse to form heavier atomic nuclei. Recombination refers to the epoch at which charged electrons and protons first become bound to form electrically neutral hydrogen atoms. So during recombination, as the universe expands and cools, protons and electrons combine to form hydrogen. So the hydrogen atom, the most abundant element in our universe. And helium nuclei combined with electrons to form helium atoms. So this process is called recombination. So again here, this illustration shows us before the recombination. So we have the protons and electrons not present in our universe that time. So, nucleosynthesis happened, no, continuously happening uh, before recombination, na form nga sila atomic nuclei. And then, nag-combine-combine na nga sila, the protons, electrons, and the nucleus, forming our atoms, or the hydrogen and helium atoms. So, after recombination, may presence na ng hydrogen atom and the helium atom. Next is annihilation. So, annihilation is a reaction in which a particle and its antiparticle collide and disappear, releasing energy. In particle physics, annihilation is the process that occurs when a subatomic particle collides with its respective antiparticle to produce other particles such as an electron colliding with a positron to produce two photons. So, in our universe, during that time, we have this what we call um, subatomic particles and antiparticles. So, ano kaya itong tinutukoy nilang subatomic particle and antiparticle? And yung proseso ang pinagdaanin nila through annihilation. Okay? So, yung tinutukoy natin subparticles are the protons and electrons. So, yung mga subparticles natin na protons and electrons, meron silang counterpart na antiparticle. Okay? So, yung antiparticle ni proton is an antiproton annihilation. And for electrons, we have an antiparticle which we call positron. Ayan. So, sabi kanina, no, during annihilation, itong proseso na to, ang nangyayari here is that nagkakolide tau si subparticle and si antiparticle. So pag nag-collide itong dalawang ito, na -re release yung uh, photons. No? May na-release na energy. So in each case, the particle and its antiparticle annihilate each other. When we say annihilate, collides each other. Na -re release yung pair of high energy gamma photons. So may na-release -re na energy. So, here is another illustration that shows us the process of annihilation. So, the particle and an antiparticle pairs no, produced, are produced from light. So, conversely, upon colliding or upon collision of a particle and antiparticle, uh, per annihilation occurs to produce light. So, yung light na yun, it is energy. Now, let's talk about redshifts. So, redshift is the displacement of spectral lines toward longer wavelengths. So, the red end of the spectrum in radiation from distant galaxies and celestial objects. So, redshift class is one of the evidence that proves the Big Bang Theory. And the red end of the spectrum here is the red wavelength of light that is seen no, and was observed by our scientists. 
So, ano bang ibig sabihin itong redshift na ito? So, when an object daw is receding, so kapag papalayo daw ang isang object, long red waves ang ma-observe. If an object daw is approaching, short blue waves ang ma-observe. So, the redshift of light from distant galaxies is assumed to indicate that galaxies are fast moving away. So, nag-stretch yung light. Okay, stretching the light. So, the redshift tells us how fast the universe is expanding. So, ito yung na-observe ng mga scientists natin for the past years. The wavelength of light na na-observe nila from our universe no, sa mga galaxies sa paligid natin, napapansin nila na ito ay shifted towards the red wavelength of the spectrum. And it means that the galaxies are moving away from us. So, kaya naman, no? uh, si redshift becomes the, one of the evidence no? that proves that the universe is really expanding. It was observed by the scientists. Napansin nga nila that yung mga kapitbahay nating galaxy ay papalayo ng papalayo. Okay, dahil nga, nasi-shift towards the red yung wavelength of light na napaperceive na dito sa planet Earth. So, that means na that the universe is really expanding. Another evidence that proved the Big Bang Theory is the relative abundance of light elements. So, this is the second piece of evidence for the Big Bang model. So, through measurements, it was found out that around 24% of the universe ordinary matter is currently comprised of helium. So, 24% helium and about 74% hydrogen and only 2% of other elements. So, relative abundance of light elements is the evidence that prove or one of the evidence that prove the Big Bang model. Next is cosmic microwave background. So cosmic microwave background is another evidence that proved the expanding universe, that proved that the Big Bang happened. So it is an electromagnetic radiation left over from an early stage of the universe in Big Bang cosmology. So as I have explained a while ago, during the formation of the elements, um, the particles of matter fuse, combined, collides, so those things happen. And when those particles collide, fuse, no, uh, light is released, energy is released, and that energy becomes a leftover or a radiation leftover. So, and that is what we know today as the cosmic microwave background. So it is the uh, radiation left over from the early stages of the development of our universe. So the remaining radiation then began to scatter and this is seen by scientists as a faint microwave glow not emitted by any object in space. So scattered lang siya sa ating universe and up until now na observe pa din siya no, yung cosmic microwave background radiation. So, the cosmic microwave background retains an imprint of conditions on the surface of last scattering. So, naging ebidensya siya na nagpatunay sa Big Bang Theory. Let's have a recap. Today, we have discussed about cosmology, the Big Bang Theory, or the Big Bang Model, how the universe evolved according to the Big Bang Theory. We also uh, looked into the stages of the Big Bang from singularity, inflation, nucleosynthesis, recombination, annihilation, and the three evidences that proves the uh, Big Bang Theory, which is the redshift, relative abundance, and the cosmic microwave background. That's pretty much it for our lesson one. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you've learned a lot from this lesson. Hope to see you in my class. Bye!